Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I made a video before this one on Bakhmut uh, and I will not get into that. Again, I think Bakhmut is done. Um, even the Estonian intelligence uh, reports that uh, kind of like uh, they are about to uh, retreat the Ukrainians uh, from Bakhmut and they already built supposedly new defensive lines behind Bakhmut. That means most likely, he said, uh, this uh, colonel of Estonian intelligence that Bakhmut is done. Anyway, or is about to be done. What I'm going to cover today is this piece of information with an uh, update of today, which is the 3rd of um, February 2023. I made another article in the morning, uh, another video regarding another article with what happened yesterday with the front, but this is an update for what happened today. All right, now I think Kiev's time is about uh, midnight or so, because they're about eight hours or something like that, eight, no, nine hours ahead. So it's all done over there, at least for the day. Uh, so let's see what's going on here. Ukrainska Pravda, it is from Friday the 3rd, February 2023. It was then in Ukraine when this was uh, reported, 18. Uh, 47. So we had 6.47 p.m. Usually they do it at 6 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning. They come with the first um, report on the, what happened ha what happened on the Ukraine for front the day before. And then uh, you can find it for what happened during the day later at about 6, 6 o'clock p.m. 6.30, 6 6.40, something like that. Okay. Occupiers, which is the Russians, carry out offensive on Bakhmut and three more fronts suffer big losses, general staff report. Well, in Bakhmut, they said all kinds of things, but uh, my, my video that I, I used about six or seven sources uh, indicates that uh, Bakhmut is in uh, bad shape for the Ukrainians. As of uh, 3 of February, the Russian occupiers are continuing to carry out the offensive on the Bakhmut, Liman, Avdivka and Novopavlivka fronts and suffer significant losses in manpower and military equipment. But somehow they're still advancing. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Source. Evening report, as I said it. I said. Of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine. Details. On the Liman front. All these are in the Don and, and uh, Luhansk in this in this um, um, uh, the offensive the four fronts that these guys are talking about. Bakhmut, Liman, Avdivka, Novopavlivka are in Luhansk and in uh, Donetsk Oblast. This is where the big uh, offensive occurs. So, on the Liman front, Russian, Russians launched attacks on the settlements of Torskie in Donetsk Oblast and Mav Makivka, Chervonopavlivka and Dibrova in Luhansk Oblast. On the Bakhmut front, the settlements of Spirnie, Vesele, Bil... Bilohorivka, Pariskovivka, Bakhmut, Ivanivske, and Druzhba in Donetsk Oblast came under attack. Uh, Liman is up north, the northest uh, of the four uh, offensive fronts or lines of attack. On the Avdivka front, the settlements of Tonenke, Vodiane, Heorivka, and Marinka were targeted. And on, on Novopavlivka front, Russians launched attacks on the settlements of Neskuchnie, Bohoyavlenka, and Vukhledar using tanks, mortars, and artilleries. artillery. Now, I got to uh, translate uh, this using tanks thing as an offensive. Usually when they said, okay, um, that's an offensive in Avdivka, they usually mentioned and used tanks. Here, in none of these strings, Liman, Bakhmut, Avdivka, they used tanks. Uh, no, the, the authors of this uh, article only in the Novopavlivka. On the Kupiansk front, Russians launched attacks using tanks again, mortars and artillery on the areas of Dvorichna, Zapednie, Holubivka, Kupianska, Kislivka in Kharkiv Oblast and Stelmakivka in Luhansk Oblast. Now we're going down, uh, not that way, but you know what I mean. On the Zaporozhia and Kherson front, these are the two lowest um, front lines, Zaporozhia and Kherson, obviously we consider 
um, the Crimean Peninsula out of this because there's no, no front on it. A little bit uh, south, uh, I would say southeast of, Zap of Kherson. So, on the Zaporozhye and Kherson fronts, the occupiers attacked over 15 settlements, including Novopil and Vremivka in Donetsk Oblast. Olihivske, Malinivka, Huliapilske, Novodanilvka and Mala Tokmachka. In Zaporozhye Oblast and Kherson, Kachkarivka and Kozatsnye in Kherson Oblast and the Volin, Polisia, Siversk and Slobozan fronts. There were no signs of Russian offensive groups. So everything else were offensive then. At the same time, the settlements close to the state border are constantly being attacked by the Russian forces. The districts of such settlements have Timonovci and Hremiach in Chernihiv Oblast. Chernihiv Oblast, I think it's up north, Chernihiv. Roznavci, okay, about a few more <laughs> that I uh, mm -mm -mm. in Sumi Oblast again, that's south of Chernihiv. Okay, so they they now here started from the north south again. So the districts of the settlements of, and it starts with Cher Chernihiv, which is the north uh, on the front, and then it goes down to Sumi Oblast, and then it goes to Kharkiv Oblast were under attack. In the settlements of Bilovodorsk in Luhansk Oblast, the occupiers turned the Central District Hospital into a military hospital and admitted up to 120 injured Russian soldiers there. In order to make up for the losses in personnel, Russia is continuing its recruiting campaign among convicts. <laughs> you can make shit up, man. All right, convicts. Well, let's put it this way. If the convicts are beating your ass, then I wouldn't mention that again. You know what I mean? It's like you fight uh, against one and say, hey, the guy actually was uh, uh, terminally ill when he fought me and actually he was not even uh, mentally there and he beat your ass. I wouldn't mention that again. Why? Because I was so bad that this guy was sick on his deathbed and he kicked my butt. I will keep that secret. <laughs> but that's me. Why should I trumpet that I was a, such a loser? Just to show later that I was uh, still a loser? Anyway, during the last week, up to 1,000 mercenaries were hired in correctional facilities of Novosibirsk Oblast in Russia. Now, if these guys in correctional facilities, people that made a mistake uh, in life and they were paying being in correctional facilities, they would come and let's say they would be in Ukraine or in the United States and they will do this, uh, hired to defend or fight for their motherland. I think they will be hailed. Don't you think so? Well, experience tells me that yes, these guys will be uh, upgraded and uh, upheld as being the, oh my, can you believe? These guys who have nothing else to lose, they want to redeem themselves. Wow, see, even the people who made a mistake maybe one time, now they try to redeem themselves. Wow, isn't that a patriotic, blah, 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 blah. All that BS, I heard it before. All right. The Air Force of the Defense Forces of Ukraine launched four attacks on the district of the concentration of Russian manpower and one attack on the position of Russian multiple launch missile system systems. The rocket forces and artillery units of the Defense Forces of Ukraine hit two areas of concentration of Russian manpower at the same time. Wow! Isn't that... Uh, how's that? that? Multitasking abilities? Yeah, this is uh, what happened today, according to the Ukrainians. Very, uh, how should I put it, very tight-lipped. Tight their reports, I like it though, because their reports are concise. Concise, they are uh, short, relatively short. And uh, they give you, uh, you know, if you want details, go and uh, do your own research. This is a summary of the general front. Remember, the whole general front coming from what? Chernihiv to uh, Sumy to Kharkiv or whatever, I think it's Kharkiv, uh, whatever it is over there, the next one, I always uh, make a uh, confusion between um, the lowest one and the other one and up north. Anyway, so then it goes to uh, uh, Donetsk, uh, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhye, and again, Kherson. I think it's Kherson, Kharkiv, these things are for me, I think it's Kharkiv is north, Kherson is south, or the other way around, see? 
anyway <laughs> so I like this kind of uh, report quick and uh, to the point obviously it comes from the Ukrainian side they say whatever they want to say and uh, that's it thank you very much for being with me again today as I said if you want more about the Bakhmut I made a video a minute ago uh, with the Bakhmut which I think you know stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just